Hello mate and welcome. In this video I want to talk a bit about a subject that I get asked questions about all the time. Before I get started though, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. If you are interested in supporting the channel, directions on how to do so can be found in the description where there's a Patreon link, so check that out. So I very frequently get asked the question about whether or not specific types of people should be programmers. Usually the question is asked in the content of I struggle with this, should I be a programmer? And rather than trying to, well, wasting a huge amount of time by answering each one of these questions individually, what I thought it would be better to do is just to do a little bit of a, I don't want to say a freestyle rap because that makes me sound ridiculous, but more I'm just going to do a bit of a uh, brain dump on my thoughts on the topic and see where we end up. So learning to code a computer is in any language is very much like learning a foreign language really you understand the words um, fairly easily but it's a case of learning the syntax or the order in which you use the words to create a complete sentence so for example you may be able to understand basic French, but you're probably never going to write poetry in French simply because it's not your native tongue, unless it is, in which case, bonjour. But that's something that just takes time and practice to get over, and it's the same with computer programming. If you can learn the syntaxes of the most basic commands over time, over repetition, over finding out information through necessity, i.e. if you have a specific problem to solve, learning the order of commands in which to overcome that problem will enable you to become more fluent in the language. This is why I really do not recommend just copy pasting code. It's why when I do a Let's Code season, I recommend that people don't just download the final source code, that they actually watch the videos and learn the reason in which we use the commands in the order that we use them and why we do things the way we do. Quite often you will deal with pedants, unfortunately it's unavoidable, people who think they know better and will try to correct you on your own code, but um, at the end of the day that's part of the learning process, you just unfortunately have to deal with people like that. Um, what I find with my Let's Code seasons is I get a lot of people who haven't watched the entire video come in and start picking me up for bits of code, or haven't watched the entire series where we maybe streamline the code that we've written because they think that all we're doing is writing a game engine when we're not, we're teaching and we're learning the specific methods that we're actually using. And it could be the same as playing a musical instrument. You might, you know, anyone can sit down at a piano and play three blind mice given a couple of minutes there, but they're never going to be playing Beethoven unless they spend years and years practicing. And again, it's very much the same process with computer programming. The more you do it, and the more you try and figure things out for yourself, the more fluent you're going to become at that particular language. I understand that a lot of people struggle with things such as classes and object-oriented programming because they don't understand the concept, they don't understand the methodology, and that comes from a lack of understanding of the difficulties of coding without object-oriented programming, which is something that I hope people never have to do. I'm, I come from a programming background back in the sort of 80s where object-oriented programming wasn't really that much of a thing and we were using BASIC and it was line 10, line 20, you know, numbered lines of code a lot of go-to's and such um, once object-oriented programming became a thing or rather reached mainstream popularity then we all kind of jumped straight onto it because it was a massive massive improvement in terms of quality of life and simplicity of programming because you weren't typing the same lines of code over and over and over again so if you're struggling with understanding the fundamentals, like I still get a lot of questions on some of the most fundamental RemPy tutorials that I've done, i.e. how to get text and images to appear on the screen, that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't be a programmer. It just means it's going to take you a longer time to get to the stage where you can do it 
it's one of those things. I understand from being a teacher myself that there are a number of people out there who have specific learning difficulties. They don't necessarily uh, struggle to understand the topic, it's just that they learn in a different way. Sometimes it takes them slightly longer to process information uh, in the way that it's presented. If you're just shoving a PowerPoint presentation in front of someone's face with an awful lot of text on it, then someone with a SPLD that means that they read more slowly is obviously going to take longer to process that information, not because they're stupid, simply because their brain works slightly differently to the person who wrote the PowerPoint presentation. So if you struggle with the most fundamental parts of programming, it doesn't mean you're stupid or that you're incapable of learning how to program. It just means that maybe you need to start looking at multiple different types of tutorials and piecing together the information or just take slightly longer to process the information and practice more often. My own experience of people with reading and numeracy specific SPLDs is they tend to be more successful when they actually apply the information that is given to them rather than just being expected to take it as fact that this is the way things are. So using the Let's Code season, for example, would be more beneficial than just watching a tutorial that says type this to do this, type this to do this, because you're actually applying the knowledge rather than just taking it as gospel. So my own answer to the question in short is if you're struggling, then yes, you can still be a programmer. It just means that you just have to put a little bit more effort in to get to the same level as people who maybe it comes naturally. But having said that, nobody is born with the ability to understand how computers speak. It's a language just like any other. If you speak it from a very early age, which I understand that a number of people do these days because uh, ICT skills are included at a very early level, particularly in the UK but I don't know about other countries but children are growing up with these smart devices in their hands from the very beginning and so they're learning how to use IT equipment much much earlier in their lives however they don't come out of the womb knowing how to use those devices it's just that because they're learning at a very early age they're generally more proficient so I hope that kind of clears things up a little bit for the people who may be struggling with the question. I would certainly never suggest that anybody shouldn't be a programmer. However, it's entirely up to you. If you are the kind of person who doesn't particularly thrive with adversity, then obviously that's going to be something that you're going to have to wrestle with and decide for yourselves personally. I think everybody has the potential to be an awesome programmer. All it takes is the time and the application. So either way, thanks very much for watching that one, guys, or rather listening. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as I'm sure you will, and I will speak to you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.